Yeah, I just wanted to come on and talk to you about my expertise <laughs> because no one is out there saying, hey, I did these treatments that my doctor suggested when he's never had, he or she, the doctors have never had the experience that I've had, okay? And they're telling you, well, now here's your next medication, second, third, I mean, and these are not just nothing medications, they're heavy duty medications. And, you know, I, I, am, I have been trying to find other people that have had success because if you've had success, with these treatments, shout it from the mountaintop because there are people out there suffering, suffering, and their life is, you know, going by them and it's slipping away. But don't tell me I'm an, I'm not an expert. I've been in the trenches and I've done all the things and I tried everything. I tried everything. So this is what improved my health the most. And it was eating steak. Steak, beef, butter, bacon, eggs, salt. I really don't think there's anybody that's more of a leading expert on this disease than me. I've had it, I got my diagnosis in 1998, and I have done literally all of the treatments, all of them. All of them failed until 10 years ago, I did have a surgical labyrinthectomy. Here's the thing, the root cause of any, of all of these issues, this is not groundbreaking news. The, if it's autoimmune, it's your body is fighting itself. And they tended to believe that my Meniere's was autoimmune, but all of it, the root cause is inflammation. Something is causing your body to have to hold on to inflammation, right? So once I had my labyrinthectomy, my surgical cure to Meniere's, the doctors, the, the experts, the specialists advised me that I could develop it in my other ear. That there is a 10% chance that I could do that. And I was 38, so, you know, I was pretty young. And I had done all of the medications. And I had done, you know, it's a gradual progression. So you start out here. And I had developed other autoimmune issues. Something in my body, something in my system whether it be genetic and environmental, like what I dealt with. I was an extreme case and it affected me terribly. So for 16 years, I took a diuretic every single day. That's one of the daily medications I was taking. At one point I was taking six, you know, and I was in my late thirties. That's not normal, that's awful. And you know, just nothing ever worked. That is pharmaceutical medicine. That is not even considering the over-the-counter medicine that I've taken. So I have taken thousands of pills over the course of my 49 years. And that is, you know, not a bragging point. That is the opposite of a bragging point. That is a cautionary tale. Work with your nutrition and lifestyle, whatever, whatever that means for you. I don't know, but when you've been to your specialist, you know, your ENT, your otolaryngologist, you know, maybe you had both, because I did, they have not experienced, most likely they have not experienced what it's like to have an attack of vertigo and be out of commission. I was always out of commission like 12 to 16 hours. We're talking about chronic, you know, the migraines. I've had migraines since puberty. All of these things, you know, and they're not getting better. Are you getting improvement from any of these treatments? Yes. Now, when I had my surgical labyrinthectomy, it gave me my life back. But other issues cropped up after 2014. Considerable health issues that would have been mitigated if anyone, you know, was out there talking about metabolic health. It's all, the root cause is inflammation. If you're having an autoimmune response, it's inflammation, something's wrong in your body. That seems basic. People say, oh, well, you're not qualified to talk about what you eat. Uh, I'm the most qualified to talk about it. I'm, first of all, I'm human. I'm a human living creature that eats food. 
I put a post on Facebook and I said, look, I did all of the, all of the things, all of the things. I've been exactly where you are. I've been low, you know, and your specialist goes and says, well, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing you can do to fix it. That is defeating. And so I was told that by like three different types of specialists because I kept developing these issues. But I had someone t uh, tell me on Facebook that I wasn't qualified to talk about what I eat and what healed me. Because there's no treatment for, there's no cure for Meniere's. I didn't say I cured it. I said it's dormant and it's in remission. And so is like for like so many other things, my brain inflammation, that brain fog, that horrible brain fog, it's gone, it's lifted, energy. Now, could I have done it by just eliminating junk, refined carbs, seed oils, you know, pro ultra processed food? Yeah, maybe, but I was in a state of crisis. When I started the lion diet in January of 2023, I was in crisis because I was dealing with another flare up of shingles in my eye. So I developed that five years after my labyrinthectomy, just out of nowhere, my eye, you know, and it, of course, it went nuclear, it went through the whole thing, you know, it started out and it progressed very quickly to the worst possible thing. Well, uh, but interestingly, they test you for all of these autoimmune illnesses, all kinds, like there's 25 of them. And they asked me, are you diabetic? Are you this? Are you that? You know, do you have this, this, this? I said, this is my medical history. I have many years. It's in remission because I had a labyrinthectomy, you know, in 2014. Asked me all these questions because I kept developing these weird things. Like I just turned 44. I was 45. I was like 50 pounds overweight. And I went back through my charts and yeah, I was pre-diabetic, which is you do not want to be pre-diabetic or diabetic. You want to halt that and figure out what, you know, what you need to do to mitigate that because, again, it's inflammation, right? And your body is not functioning the way it's meant to function. We are not born sick. Most people are not born chronically ill. Something is causing it. And little do we know that what we are eating and our habits, our lifestyle habits, are usually the source we don't do it on purpose, you know. I didn't do it. I didn't do it on purpose when I was feeding my kids from my plate because their pediatrician said they need to eat all these things that they refuse to eat. Oh, it's fine for them to have, you know, junk food in moderation. 70% of kids' diets are junk food. I was right there doing it. I was eating it and I was feeding it to my family. I didn't know. I know better, so I do better. I know what helped me as an expert of living with chronic illness for 26 years, probably longer, really. I know what works and you can figure out how, how to do it on your own. But I can promise you, you know, the mainstream message is not going to be, oh, take a look at some of your lifestyle habits because it's easier to sell you a pill that you will, you know, be de you will feel like you're dependent on for the rest of your life. I started taking a diuretic, which is a blood pressure medicine, when I was 23, and I took it every single day for 16 years. I took it until the day before I had my labyrinthectomy. And think about it. So I took all kinds of oral steroids. I don't know how many oral steroid packs I have taken in my life, but it's a lot. A diuretic for 16 years, the pill, took that for at least 10 years. You know, then I got, you know, sometimes I would, occasionally I would take meclizine, that kind of thing, never helped. Literally nothing helped my vertigo attacks. Weird. But it's probably, you know, what I was eating. And I didn't drink hardly at all when I had, when I was having chronic dizziness. Like, because that's the last thing you want to do. And I didn't drink caffeine either. But I'll tell you what I did drink. Lots of sugary drinks. I didn't even start drinking Diet Coke until like after my labyrinthectomy. 
before that I drank, I, I switched from Coke to Sprite. No caffeine, you know. None of those things work. They do not mitigate in my experience and in my circumstance. And there's almost 40,000 people in a global Facebook group. And we're coming people that have had labyrinthectomies and then they're getting bilateral Meniere's disease. And then the doctors are like, well, keep taking the medicine, keep taking the medicine. I have no options. You know, I'm not going to develop Meniere's in my other ear, my good ear. I'm 49. I would love to live into my 90s. I'm going to do everything I can to live into my 90s as maybe 98, 99 years old with a whole bunch of grandkids and, and great grandkids. And let's see if we can get some great, great grandkids. You know, I don't want to feel like crap when I'm old. I want to have all of the information so I can make an informed decision. If your decision is to do a treatment because you're in crisis and you just need relief and you, you know, whatever, great. But I think you need and deserve to have all of the information. So I went on to develop autoimmune hyperthyroid issues seven years after I got my diagnosis of Meniere's. I have Graves' disease. I will have to replace my thyroid hormone for the rest of my life. I got that diagnosis when I was 30 years old. The treatment is radioactive iodine, and I did it. I had some insulin resistance that was causing me problems. You know, I, I had been taking the pill because I had bad cramps. I had headaches and migraines my whole my whole life until two years ago. I haven't had a migraine in 20 months. I haven't had any migraines. I've had a few headaches, you know, and yes, I have taken over the counter pain reliever when I have a headache, but I don't take it every day like I used to. I don't take any kind of over the counter allergy medicine any, anymore. I don't take any kind of over the counter, you know, acid reducer like I was before that I took daily for two years after having the long haul, you know what? I'm sure all of it for me, my experience, and I'm an expert, I think 26 years and major surgeries and all of the treatments that they told me then and same, same treatments now, I think that makes me an expert. You know, I think I had it bad enough that I qualify as an expert. Not to even mention any of the mental health. I was on two different SSRs at two different times. SSRIs, pardon me. Once, I took it for like two or three years after, from 2001 for a while. And that was a, a, a big moment. We had, my cousin tragically died. And I'm not telling you not to take medicine. Take medicine all you want. Um, thank goodness I didn't have any problems withdrawing from it that I'm aware of. You know, I just didn't realize. Um, my other experience was after my youngest, no, pardon me, after my oldest daughter was born, I was off for three months with her. And then when it was time to go back to work, I was having terrible anxiety that something was going to happen to her. It was the beginning of my horrible heightened anxiety all I'm sure related to my hormones and my metabolic health and my inflammation, insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is what it was for me. That was causing the inflammation, the whole body inflammation. And the OB doctor said, here's a pill, take this pill. And I'm pretty sure I took that pill for, well, I took it throughout my second pregnancy. They said, oh sure, it's fine. Along with the diuretic, Took that during both of my pregnancies. It's fine. Hmm. Weird. That I could have just eaten real whole food. You know. Maybe if I had found out then to eat real whole food and not to do low fat and low salt. To do the opposite of what they say. Maybe all of this inflammation would have been mitigated. But I don't know. And I'll never know. And that's okay. Um, but this is an option. And I think that you deserve to know about it. I have... Just a long, drawn-out history of inflammation. They thought it was shingles in my eye. It was awful. And you know what the treatment is? Steroid eye drops. That's it. That's all they can do. 
Oh, or, and an antiviral medicine because they did not have, there was nothing pointing to what was causing it, except that I was 45 to, I was 50 pounds overweight and I was pre-diabetic. I think that's what's causing it. And they didn't. So I figured it out on my own. I had a crisis situation where my inflammation was coming back. I had just eaten something, you know, it was really whole food and it was plant, you know, it was mostly plants and seeds. And for whatever reason, I cannot eat those types of things without massive inflammation. And this time I had a terrible reaction. And while it was no fun, I'm glad it happened because I completely changed my life. I went full lion diet for two weeks. And then shortly after that, I noticed inflammation reducing immediately, like within days. My urge to drink alcohol because I had started drinking considerable, con a considerable amount of wine in the last two years. You know, I was grieving. My dad had died and all of these things and it just caught up with me. And I'm 47 years old and I'm like having an allergic reaction. And I was like, I can't go through another debilitating chronic illness. Well, we don't know. Here's some pills. They might work. They might not. I just was, I was done and I thought I'll do whatever. And so I found Michaela Peterson and she only eats meat. I'll do that for two weeks because this other stuff is for the birds. No thanks. I'm not doing this again. I'd already had, you know, like two episodes, two flare-ups of the uveitis in my eye. And this was my third one. Yeah, I don't know. One's enough. One's enough. And... You know, I was trying to lose weight and diet and do it the right way and eat four to six times a day and eat all these nuts and seeds and plants. And I was eating very low protein. I was, you know, I wasn't getting protein, bioavailable, nutrient-dense food. I really just wasn't. I was not getting nearly enough nutrients that I needed because I've been a chronic yo-yo dieter since I was, you know, a teenager. Huh. And, you know, as a food addict, I was an emotional eater. I just, I had, it was just, it all caught up with me. So I thought I'll do the line diet for two weeks. And immediately my craving for alcohol went away. Like miraculous. That is a miracle how quickly it just shut off. Um, the sugar cravings took a lot longer. Sugar was the hardest thing I've ever quit. And I used to smoke. Um which is really stupid, don't ever do that. And it was in when I was in college. Anyway, sugar has been the absolute most difficult thing to kick. I still dream about it sometimes, but it's more of like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, you know? And in the beginning, it was very, you know, it was like day to day. It was moment to moment sometimes that I would think, I just have to get through this moment. I just have to get through this moment. And you do it, and you do it, and you do it. And it gets easier. So. I had lost 16 pounds in three months because I started my YouTube channel in 90 days. And after, you know, I was introduced to Michaela Peterson on the internet, I just dove in. This is how I am. I am an all or nothing. I don't do anything that I'm passionate about. If I'm interested in something, I'm doing it all the way. And now here we are. It's been 20 months and I'm down 50 pounds and I'm feel better than I've ever felt. I'm healthier than I've ever been. And, um, you know, I take one supplement and that is my thyroid supplement because I have no choice. I'll die without it. And I take the natural, I take armor. So that's a whole nother video. Um, my skin cleared up. Now I do get flushed. I still do get flushed. You know, I have gone into, I'm in perimenopause, full blown. So I still have you know, I have some of those symptoms, but my hormones have healed and have gotten so much better. My inflammation has healed. You know, I've lost weight. My mental health, my mental clarity, you know that brain fog you get with many years? Oh gosh, oh, it was horrible. I don't have that. I don't have headaches. I don't have allergies. I don't take any allergy medicine. Occasionally, if I have a headache that I can't kick, I will take over-the-counter medicine. I mean, I'm not a purist. And if something happens, and the meat starts making me sick, I'll switch, okay? I never cared about fruits and vegetables. We didn't grow up eating them very much. Don't care. So that was a take it or leave it for me. 
and you know I eat pretty striped carnivore I would you know but I don't get upset because you know this person eats this or that person can eat that I'm overjoyed for them if it's working for them and they're feeling great fantastic do it all day do it all day every day what do I care you know I'm not judging other people because I'm an addict I'm not judging you I'm an addict I know exactly you know if you're eating something it doesn't matter to me all right y'all take care I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.